an unboxing and a review of the Sage Kitchen Wiz Pro 50 because as I was doing my research, I didn't see a whole lot of reviews out there, especially in the video format. And since this is quite an investment and a long-term appliance that you'll be keeping in your home forever, I wanted to share some specs on what made me choose this food processor over other ones and I'll go over some of the basic features of what this food processor can do. Another thing to mention is that I ended up going for the Kitchen Wiz 15 Pro, but there's also another version called the Sage Kitchen Wiz 16 Peel and Dice. I believe the 16 is the latest version of the food processor. I got one that was just slightly older than that model. The two models were almost identical, except for the fact that the 16 indeed came with the peel and dice kit. Which with the peeler, you can peel potatoes in a matter of seconds. But I've seen many people say that the peeler only really worked with regular potatoes. It did not work with things like sweet potatoes, carrots, or any kind of soft fruits or vegetables like kiwis or tomatoes. And with the dicer, it's useful to make something like a fruit salad, but again, unfortunately, it only works with soft fruits and vegetables, and it didn't work with any hard fruits or vegetables or other food items. And then one final reason that I did not go for the Kitchen with 16 version is that that peel and dice kit on a lot of retails, you have to buy that kit separate for another 100 to 200 euros. So for myself, I did not think that I would be using that peel or dice kit enough for me to warrant that extra cost for it and the Kitchen Wiz Pro was perfectly good enough for it. So, so if you're trying to choose between the two models, well, if the prices are somewhat similar to each other, then I would just go for the latest version. But if you think that you're not going to be using the peel and dice kit that often, so think how often do you peel a lot of potatoes at once, or how often do you want to make something like a fruit salad. If you don't think you're going to do those things, and if the price is a lot better for the Kitchen Wiz 15 version, then I would definitely recommend just going for the 15 version. One last thing that I wanted to mention and for clarification is that I actually filmed this video a few months back, but some of the clips were slightly unusable, so I decided to do a retake so there might be a bit of a mix up of some new clips from now and some older clips from back then. Now, another aspect that I wanted to mention about this food processor is its storage. Since it is quite a heavy appliance, my first recommendation, if your space allows for it, would be to place it at a designated spot on the kitchen counter so that it's always within reach, you don't have to take it out of a cabinet. But if you don't have the space for that, then second recommendation would be to give it designated space in a kitchen cabinet for it. And preferably somewhere that is easily accessible, that's cool for you to take it out, but also to put it back into the cabinet, an area where it won't be a pain for you to get it out. So for us, I have chosen this cabinet space because it's close to the kitchen counter, it's close to an outlet, and it's on a bottom shelf, so until here, I just have to bend down and it's not so far away to take it out and bring it to the kitchen counter over there. Another little tip when it comes to storage and something that we did here is to place the heavier motor at the front and the other accessories and the, sorry, the cup holder at the back because the food processor motor is a lot heavier, so you want to do less work to take it out. Last thing to note when it comes to storage is that with the accessory kit, it comes in this plastic kit that you can open and close. Well, basically you can store it on its bottom like so, but you can also store it on its side. So if you don't have that much horizontal space, then this is another way of saving space when it comes to storing it. Here we have the base for the food processor. It's a very powerful motor. The stainless steel is quite a nice color that could probably go in any kitchen. It gives it a bit of a sleek, modern, minimalistic design as well. The base is also quite heavy at, I believe, 12 kilos. And the heavier weight helps to ensure that it stays in place, even if you use it in a very powerful setting. Now the settings are quite simple with a power off button, a start and pause button, and then a pulse button. And then this little display is for you to set a timer. So you can set a timer for 20 seconds, for example, and then press start. And then after 20 seconds, the food processor would stop. Now, while it might seem like a negative thing at first, that this food processor does not have the option to choose a setting. So in other food processors, you could often choose how powerful you want your food processor to uh, run. So often you have settings to choose between one to six, and one would be a very light spin, and then six would be a very powerful spin. Well, this food processor here, the Sage one, does not need it because its motor is so powerful and uh, it uses a form of auto intelligence in there. I'm not exactly sure about the science or the mechanisms behind it, but from what I've gathered is that 
It reads factors such as the weight that's in the food bowl, how the blades spin around, how much air capacity there's in there, so does the food stick to the bottom or does it really float around in there? That will change the way the motor works. But what you want to pay more attention to, which is what this food processor did way better than other food processors that I researched, is you want to focus on its pulse button. You want each pulse to give a powerful, strong burst that will just blitz through the items as efficiently and quickly as possible. And that is something that this one definitely does. First up, the container, the food ball, comes in two different sizes. It has a small bowl of 600 ml and a larger bowl of 2.4 liters. The kind of negative thing about the smaller one is that it has to go within the bigger bowl and if you put too much of it and it overflows, then you will have to end up cleaning both of the bowls. But the main purpose for the smaller bowl and what's nice about it is that you want to have a good distribution of food in there and space around it. Now you don't want the food bowl to be too full so that there's not enough space for the food to move around in there. So you do want to leave a bit of extra space. But on the same note, you don't want there to be too much space as well. So that's why you have the option to use either of these bowls depending on what you're making. So for example, if you're only chopping one onion and a few garlics and some uh, powders to make a kind of paste, then the smaller one would be better for that. But if you're planning on making a big batch and you're chopping a lot of vegetables for a soup or a pasta, then it is recommended to use the larger bowl. Now as for the lid and its base, they're very easy to connect to each other. The lid has these plastic bits that stick out and some indentation marks. And also with the handle, you see these two should match up with each other. You basically slide it in and then you can move it to the side and then you'll hear the clicking mechanism, meaning it's closed and then to open it, you just push it to the side. Another aspect that made this food processor a winner compared to other ones is the fact that its lid had two different feeders. So it comes with two different sizes, a smaller one and a larger one. With the smaller size, you can put in skinnier fruits or vegetables, like a slim piece of carrot or a parsnip. And then with the larger size, you can fit in larger pieces of fruits and vegetables, like a whole zucchini could just fit in there, or an apple. And the benefit of a wider size is that obviously larger pieces of fruits and vegetables could fit in there in one go, but that you also don't have to chop the fruit or vegetable into a smaller size. So for example, if you only had the smaller opening size, then obviously this would not fit in there and you'd have to chop this in half or even into a smaller size until it could fit in there. And another quick thing to mention is that you wouldn't either want to put a thin piece of carrot into the wide chute because then it wouldn't be stable in there and it would most likely just fall to its side and it wouldn't do its job properly. And a lot of other food processors did not give this option. You can either have the small opening or the wide opening. to go over what actually came in this accessory kit and what made me choose this food processor over other ones because I did a lot of research and it was definitely the accessories that made the Sage food processor more of a winner against other food processors. Now first thing when it comes to the accessory kit, I think the story of it is very well done. It feels very sturdy, high quality. It's easy to open and close. All the accessories have its own individual spot that are easy to take out and slot and put back into its slot. They're also labeled so you know exactly where to put it back but also what it is. And overall well, it's a nice size and it keeps all the accessories well protected. And now I want to go over these individual pieces and just briefly explain what they do, what they're useful for, or maybe what the detriments of them are. have a dishwashing brush. It has a round shape and quite firm bristles and it's useful to use in those hard to reach spots like near the corners of these indentation marks. A small thing I would recommend to do is to keep this underneath your sink area and to only use this brush for the food processor because it's useful to use for the food processor and I guess you want it to last quite a while. And I do clean these in the dishwasher once in a while. And one more quick thing to mention in regards to the dishwashing brush is that as you're cleaning it do make sure that you try to rinse out as much as the food crumbs or the food, whatever's left in there, as much as possible. Because it is quite difficult to get food stuck in here out of this brush. The spatula. It's a little bit flexible and it has quite a wide edge. It's beneficial to use if you have to do things like stop the food processor halfway through and help scrape the food to the bottom. 
on the same note, it's useful to use it to help scrape food out of the food processor as well. Now, as for all the proper accessories, we have the mini chopping blade, which goes into the smaller mixing bowl. Basically helps to chop things into smaller sizes. Then we have the double chopping blade, which comes in a protected plastic case and it goes into the larger food container. Now the benefit of a double blade is that it chops more amount of items in a short amount of time. Basically, it helps to get the job done faster. Now these are also incredibly sharp, so I would recommend hand washing them to prolong its life, but also be very careful when you're handling them. Then we have a dough blade. I believe you can use this to knead dough for bread, for example, but I'm not the best baker and I don't know too much about this, but it would be interesting to try another day. Then we have the whisk, which is useful to make things such as whipped cream or perhaps to beat eggs to make a meringue. Now again, I'm not too familiar with this item either, but I have heard other people say that if you are very serious about baking, then it would be better to invest into one of those KitchenAid food mixers than to try to rely on this alone. Next up we have the disc spindle. Nothing special about it, but you place it in the middle and then you can add these four accessories on top, such as the shredder or the adjustable slicer, which I will go over next. Next up we have the adjustable slicer. Now what's great about this one compared to other food processors is the fact that you can indeed just turn this knob to increase or decrease the size of the chopped vegetable that you will be chopping. Now a lot of other food processors came with either one of these in a set size or came with multiple of these, which means that you have to store more of them, whereas with this one, you can just store one of them saving space and you can adjust its size. Next up we have the reversible shredder. You can use this to grate or shred things like cheese, apples, carrots, whatnot. It is a lot faster and helps to replace this item. It's also reversible so you can choose the size of the shreds that you want. So one gives more smaller sizes and the other one gives larger shreds. Then we have the Julian slicer. It comes in one standard size, so unfortunately you cannot adjust the size of it. However, this Julian is quite a nice accessory to have because it sometimes does help with the presentation when the food item is chopped into a Julian piece versus just regular chopping it. So for example, it's useful for things like garnishes or a side salad or in a sushi burrito. And then lastly, we have this accessory which helps to cut french fries. It also comes in one standard size, but that doesn't really matter too much with me. And if you try peeling and chopping potatoes into french fries, then you know how much time it takes you. So this will save you a lot of time. And so there we have all the accessories. Quite a good amount for what you expect for a high-end food processor, but also not over the top where it has a whole bunch of accessories that you would just never reach for. showcase operating this machine, there are three things that I like to do beforehand. The first thing I like to do is to take a picture of it all. Now would be a good time to do it because everything is new, so all the accessories are there, everything is in top shape, and so forth. It's basically a good way to remember what the kit came with so that if I ever lose or misplace one of the items, then I have the picture to refer back to. I ended up taking two pictures and then I merged them into a collage. In the first picture, I wanted to showcase in general what was in there, so the accessory kit and the food processor and the base. And then in the second picture, I wanted to showcase in more detail what was in there, so then I took all the accessories out and laid them out, so you could in potential see in greater detail what was actually in there. The second thing I like to do is to write down the return date and to keep all the packaging until I know that it's safe to keep. It is quite an expensive item and a long-term investment piece, but I want to make sure that it most importantly works and that I also like the device. 
once the return date is up and you're confident that you want to keep the piece, then you can throw away the packaging. But I would recommend you keep the styrofoam and the original box, so that's well protected if you ever had to transport it. And now the third thing I like to do before starting to use it is to give each individual piece a proper clean and to let it completely dry. This is quite an easy machine to operate and to put together. To plug it in, and the way you put it on is that you make sure that the handle is lined up on the right side. And it even gives a little mark here which says a line handle. So you put the handle there and then you twist it to the left until you hear a clicking, locking mechanism. And then to open it, you push it to the right and you can lift it off. And here as well it says turn to lock. Then you can power it on and it's ready to start running. happen if I try to make some breadcrumbs. So these were old baguettes that I just uh, roasted in the oven till they were crispy and then see how well that does it. Let's try that again. slices but maybe it was too much of a soft vegetable so I'd want to try it with something like a cucumber or a carrot or something to give more of a fair test but definitely made my life a lot easier than trying to cut all these pieces up by hand so it's still a win So I washed these apples and then I took out the core. What I want to try doing with these is I try using a shredder accessory because I want to try making something like bliss balls using shredded apples and oats and peanut butter. So I've uh, done this before with a hand grater, like grating the carrots like that. It took me two hours or three hours to get it all done. So this can significantly reduce that time then I will be much more inclined to make these way more often than I do now. One apple fits even. Okay, let's see what happens. Thank you. 
up with the peanut butter. Once you have quite a nice firm texture, you can start rolling up into a ball.